Hello and welcome to day number 17 of Vlogmas. We are slowly approaching the last week of Vlogmas. Um, it's a bit hard to believe next Sunday it's actually Christmas Eve. I feel like the whole year just flied by. Um, Vlogmas is also kind of started off and felt really long. And then the time just went. I don't know where. Um, I had a very calm Sunday. Um, I've done some housework in the morning. Which then kind of turned into afternoon. It was already getting dark. So um, we're not going to have a long video today, unfortunately. Um, but as always, let's open uh, the advent calendars. Day 17, we've got over here. The box is big, it does feel quite light though. So we'll see. I suddenly feel a bit warm. So I'm going to take off my cardigan. And let's see what we've got. We've got another conditioner. Now, I don't know if it's an error. I'm going to look back to see what everyone else got on the day that I received a conditioner and see what everyone is getting for 17th. Because I might have gotten a faulty calendar. Um, it's fine though, um, because usually I get through double the conditioner than I do get through um, a shampoo. So nothing fancy, exactly the same conditioner that we received before. There we go. Hopefully, um, yarn advent calendar is not going to be a repeat of the same color we already had. Day 17 is lavender oat latte. I like oatmeal and latte. Um, my go-to coffee is usually um, coconut milk latte with an extra shot. But oat milk is good. Um, number 17. There we go. Let's open that. Beautiful. So probably white represents oat milk and uh, purpley blue represents um, lavender. We also have got some speckles as you see. It's a beautiful, beautiful one. Probably one of, well, I had a lot of favorites before, but this does definitely get into top three of uh, this year's canes. Here we go. Beautiful. So yeah. I am, as I said, taking this day a bit lighter, a bit easier on myself because filming all these days is a bit, it does get a bit too much and overwhelming, especially when you try to show uh, more than just what yarn you get and what your socks look like or what your project looks like. Mm, I am thinking, uh, what's the time? It's just six. Uh, my husband is already out working. Um, I have separated some um, egg whites 
which I'm currently letting them sit for a little bit. So I might go to make macaroons. I don't know if I'm not going to regret that. But I might go to make some macaroons uh, because Christmas is um, quickly approaching and I do want to make some macaroons for us to enjoy over the Christmas. So if I do that, um, I'm going to take you along. But for now, I'm going to go enjoy a bit more knitting and um, I might show you the progress of my socks and my pop knit jumper. And if I make macarons, I'll show you them as well. So, let's talk um, macarons baking. Um, if you're like me and you like macarons and you like to do baking, you've got to give it a try to do it at home. Now, everyone keeps saying um, they're hard, you can't do it, you need amazing ovens. It's all a lie. Anyone can make macaroons if they've got patience. Um, I'm going to show you what you need. Um, and I'm going to show you how I make them. And then you might finally get that little extra push you need to give them a try. So the ingredients are very simple and uh, I'm only making the shells today. So what you need is ground almonds. Now, I buy mine in Tesco. Uh, they are, uh, they do sell them in Lidl's. But you have to um, sift them through. So even though Tesco ones, they are more expensive, you don't end up binning as much as you do with the little ones. The little ones are a bit larger. If you have... Um, a nutri bullet or any other kind of machine um, that would break them apart or like chop it smaller, you could get yourself the little ones and uh, put it through, for example, nutri bullet to make them a bit smaller and then uh, sieve them through and use them. For me, this is too much of extra game to do, so I buy Tesco ones. And I sieve them through. Um, you could keep the remainder and use it for stuff like um, biscuits, pies, uh, sponges, whatever else you make. You could put them in. I, to be perfectly honest, bin them. Because it's just a bit too much for me to save it all until I have enough to do something else with it. So that's how I do it. So ground almonds. I prefer Tesco ones. Then you need icing sugar. Icing sugar, easy game. Whichever brand you like. I, I got mine this time from a little. You also need caster sugar or um, any sugar that is smaller than a normal caster sugar. I also bought this one from Lidl. You will also need some food dyeing or if you want to make a natural ones and uh, not put any food coloring. You don't need that, but um, I bought these from Amazon and they come in the little pots like that. Um, if you buy yourself food coloring, make sure you buy the gel one. Um, that's just the best. Um, it's a stronger color, more vibrant. You're not going to need to put as much. So this is the one that I'm going to use. Because I'm making pistachio ones, I'm going to be using green. So I need that. And then finally you need egg whites. Now here I've got some egg whites which have been separated and been standing for about six hours. Um, you have to let them sit for a little bit at the room temperature. Um, you can leave them overnight if you're more organized. 
If you're not organized as me and you decide to make them last minute, then do leave them out until they become room temperature and at least for about five, six hours. So I've got that. Now this is optional. Um, you don't need it, but it does make your macaroon game a bit easier. Is mats like that. So they already come with the shape of a macaroon. There are two lines you can choose which size of a macaroon you want to make and it also tells you kind of a central where to start piping it from these are a little bit smaller and um, this is the same so i bought mine from amazon and it came in a three pack like that so um i don't use any uh baking paper i pipe directly on this and i just cook it or bake them and you also need a tray a flat one if possible you don't want your macaroons to be um, basically you want them to be on a nice flat surface so the problem I'm having is that this is bigger than the tray so as you can see it doesn't stand as flat so I'm in a bit of a debate whether I cut them out or whether I mean I keep using it, I just don't pipe on the places that are a bit, you know, that doesn't sit as flat. So I use pretty much just the middle part, and then the little one. Sits perfectly nicely on here, and I just make because you need two shells to make one macaroon. I usually pipe on here and you also obviously need a piping bag and a piping tip uh, for macarons i use 3a which is just this round tip um 3a is the best uh, size that i found for myself and um just a simple not a reusable but the one that you use up and throw it away piping bag I'm going to now get on and start doing my macarons. And I forgot to mention, obviously, you need an electric whisk. This recipe, you won't be able to mix it by hand. Um, not a chance. You need the egg whites uh, whisked a uh, similar way as a meringue. So I've got here my uh, icing sugar and almond flour. I'm going to mix it through. So it's kind of blended together. You'll also need yourself one of these. So this goes on the side. Now you need a bowl where you're going to whisk it in. You put your egg whites. And you start whipping it without any sugar. I've got my caster sugar in a bowl. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start whisking it until it starts forming a foam. And then I'm going to slowly, bit by bit, add my caster sugar until it's all um, mixed together with the egg white. And I'm going to whisk it until you have strong peaks, so it's not moving. I've got my egg whisked. Now the way to know if you've done it correctly is to do this. If this happens and you don't get any of it over your head, you're good to go. Now the next part is food coloring. You want to dye your egg white before you start mixing in your dry ingredients. Now I'm making pistachio ones, so I'm going to be putting in a green one. Food coloring, completely up to you. How much you add in, that's how strong your color is going to be. So I want mine to be quite strong. So I'm going to put this much in. Now 
after I mix in the food coloring, I do sh uh, don't mix it for too long, just so that the color goes through. What I then do is I go through with it by hand so that everything that was on the bottom mixes through and also gets colored. Now here, we're going to put all of the dry ingredients and you have to start mixing it. Now when you mix it, you've got to be quite careful. You don't go crazy in mixing it. So just keep mixing it in patiently until you get consistency that I'm going to show you in a second. Now the way I mix it is I go from the sides and through the middle. From the sides through the middle. And you mix it like that. Keep checking for consistency of you lifting your dough and it needs to slide without breaking. So it needs to kind of go down beautifully. Mine is almost there but not quite now if you over mix it your macaroons will hold, won't hold the shape when you pipe them and they will become like a little flat pennies if you under mix it they, and they're not going to be smooth so i mix it bit by bit and then i check it and then i mix it again check it i mix it again check it so keep repeating that until you get this smooth runny consistency, but not a runny too smooth, but not breaking. You can only get it right by doing it. So a couple of times of practice and you will know what you're looking for. Mine is right. The next thing something tall that I can rest my piping bag in. And I put in my piping bag, cut it at the top to insert, to insert, to insert your bit. And then I stick, put some in. So by the time I finish filling in the bag, it doesn't pour out here. Add your batter into your piping bag. So I always pipe the bigger ones first. need to let the air out and then you pipe I think I showed how I was piping it on one of the vlogmas before when my sister was over and she was able to film it for me. So if you want some tips on how to pipe it, maybe try watching that video to see a visual way to help you imagine how to pipe them. Piping is quite relaxing to do once you get a hang. But I think macaroons is the only thing I like piping. <laughs> I've got some shaky hands. 
because I drink coffee at about five o'clock which was not a good idea and probably my blood pressure went up so I've got very shaky hands now so when you finish piping them you have to bang them on the table to flatten them out and to let the air out now this scares my dog and my neighbors A little tip to get rid of these little nipples is to wet your finger and then just dab it to smooth it out. It does um, fix it. I'm going to leave these two not uh, straightened so you'll see what happens if you don't make them flat. Nothing's gonna happen obviously, but they just look prettier without them. So I've done the same for this. And now I'm going to let them sit like that for about 30 to 40 minutes, or I'm going to probably go do some knitting. Um, I'm gonna knit my today's color into two of my socks. And by the time that happens, they will be all dried up and I can then pick them. We're going to put them in and bake them. I bake them for about 20 minutes. Here we've got a baked macaroon. Uh, don't be scared to bake them um, for a bit longer than 20 minutes. Kind of see how they are as you bake them um, because they have to form a nice crust um, as a base. So you have your little um, a skirt or um, how they call it. <laughs> um, obviously, if you've got a nicer, better oven uh, than my one, which was about probably 200 pounds, um, all of it, <laughs> um, your macaroons will probably have a bigger skirt. Uh, but I can show you how it is to peel them off. So they have to just come undo nicely and have that nice base so this one for example some of them as you see they pop up so um you just bend the mat and let it slide off um, let them cool before you start to lift it because as soon as you take it out of the oven they still a bit warm they are uh, still trying to you know glue together and then afterwards they slide right off beautifully um so this one cracked and it's got a bubble uh, because it was at the back of the oven uh, i've noticed my macaroons don't bake nicely if they are at the back so i can uh take it apart and show you how it is in the middle so you have that nice gooey inside with a macaroon and obviously they are still they've got plenty of inside they're not um empty inside um and they've got that nice gooey texture you can kind of stick them together my husband loves them um <laughs> just as they are not even being filled so any that are not good or not nice i just give it to him here we go beautiful macaroons now um obviously not all of them turn out as beautiful in my oven but you know what when you glue them together and you put your filling you have a beautiful macaroon that you can show off that you made yourself so um, when I make the filling, um, I'll show you that probably in another Vlogmas. You see my beautiful boiler. Uh, <laughs> I promise you guys one day I will have a nice fancy kitchen with a nice oven. And then I will make so many other beautiful things. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.